So in terms of the ground announcing this year, if we could just really emphasize the fact that we are the best team in the world, don't mention Europe, because that's not factually true, but best team in the world, just mention that every couple of minutes, really try and psych the opposition out. Oh, hold on, phone call, I've got to take this off against our new transfer, okay? But work on that, the best in the world. I want some of that this season, okay? Hello? At Lorsheim. Ah, yes, okay, so has the deal been done? Unfortunately, no. No? What do you mean, no? He has signed a contract extension at Gremio. Is this a problem? No, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. In case you haven't figured it out yet, I adapt better than anyone in this business. That was just a plan A. That was just plan A, that one. Today, plan B. There's always a plan B. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 145 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode. It could be a big old long one because we've got a big domestic recap that we have to get through. We've also got a transfer update, our squad run through and we check in on how the other Icelandic teams have been getting on so far in UA for qualifying before we get into a Champions League playoff which is as you can see on screen against Legia Warsaw and hopefully off the back of that we will also have a Champions League draw so as I said could be a big one this one if you're looking forward to it then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but off the back of the end of last week the FIFA Club World Cup if you missed the finals of that tournament I'll leave a link to that episode in the top right corner we are the club world cup champions and we are about to try and qualify for the group stages of this season's champions league which is a little bit odd I know but we haven't quite got into that top 10 yet to get an automatic group spot in the champions league on the coefficient table sitting in 11th going into this upcoming season but before we do a recap of what's been going on domestically because of course off the back of the club world cup we did have to play quite a bit of catch up in terms of making up fixtures. First off, something I did actually forget to mention before, we have had our youth intake here at Volsunger. If we make our way over to the development centre and actually have a look at the youth candidates, we're not going to spend too long on this one because as you can see on screen, it's not a very good youth intake. Half star rated, it's a poor intake. There's three players who have three star potential. Those are the ones we are definitely going to sign, but the rest of them, not too sure about it, truth be told. First off, Steiner Loggi Finson, he is a centre back, one star current ability. As I said, three star potential, 1.93 metres tall, so he could be quite useful in terms of his height, but we'll see how he gets on. He's probably only ever going to be a fringe player for us here. At Volsunger, next up, we do have a right winger, actually more of a defensive winger there, based on that description on the left hand side. But this is his Vine Elias Kalasan, he comes to us with half star ability, three star potential at 15 years old so again he might work his way up to being a decent squad player for us in the future but that's probably as I said all that he would be and the other player we've got is a midfielder in Paul Steinberg man again half star current ability three star potential those are the three players out of this year's youth intake we are definitely going to offer contracts to the rest of them don't have much potential pretty disappointing youth intake this year truth be told so thankfully we signed a lot of players off that next gen list over the last few seasons who can come through the club and become homegrown at club and in nation sooner rather than later but off the back of that rather poor youth intake to start off today's episode we do need to catch you guys up on what we have done off the back of that final of the club world cup as you can see on screen over the weekend have played quite a bit domestically we have had an absolutely packed july and it's not going to get any better for us in August but as you can see on screen it's actually not going to take too long this recap because we have won all of our games we are through to the semi-final of the Icelandic Cup the Molka Bicker and if we make our way down a little bit further you can see that is coming up against Viking Reykjavik that's a team we really should be beating they are struggling a little bit in the league at the moment we are still unbeaten in the league as well so thankfully we've been able to get ourselves up the table a little bit off the back 
of a lack of fixtures at the end of last week. And at the moment, we are in second, but only three points behind HK with three games in hand. And we've already played HK twice as well and bet them twice. So that's quite a good advantage that we do have going in to the second half of our season. But right in the title fight yet again. Should have a good gap over HK once we do catch up to those guys on fixtures. Played to everything going quite well ever since we did lose that Champions League final last week to Manchester City. But the next thing that we need to cover off in today's episode is some transfers that we have done off the back of that FIFA Club World Cup. We've made a few sales and one very, very big addition who goes into our starting lineup for this upcoming Champions League season. And here is the transfer business that we have done off the back of the FIFA Club World Cup. The last bit of transfer business that we did do before that was a couple of loans out to HK back in May. So we're going to start out on the outside and then we can sort of explain how we've replaced those guys on the inside. We haven't actually made too many signings recently, so that shouldn't take too long anyway. And of course, one of those signings was the deal that we already had in place for Adam Saki to become a permanent member of the squad here at Volsen, but first off, we let go of Andy Howard. He was in the last year of his contract. He decided to leave on a free to West Ham at the end of our Icelandic season. We offered him out for £550,000 immediately so they could take him off our hands, and they accepted that deal. He's valued quite highly, so potentially we could have got a bit more for him, but with him being in the last year of that contract, any money is appreciated for a player who otherwise would have left us on a free transfer. He was a good solid player for us. Andy Howard is a backup left back and right back. But with our additions from that next gen list recently, we've got some really promising players. So I want to give some game time here this season, likes of Louis Hulila and Radenko Krolo. So those guys jumped above Andy Howard on the squad depth chart here at Volsunga. So we let him go to not renew his contract. And he has gone to West Ham a little bit early for 500 and £50,000 off the back of that, a player that we did sign quite cheap a few seasons ago, Brahima Makalau, never really, I don't think, made a first team appearance here at Volsunga, he has gone back to Africa, decent looking player, but his ability and potential being a foreign player did mean he was never really going to get that much game time here at Volsunga, so we let him go, we bought him, as I said, quite cheap a few seasons ago for £35,000, he goes back to the Ivory Coast to Mimosas for £300,000 and £50,000 so for a player who never really played for us. I don't think that is quite a good deal getting 10 times what we spent on him back for that transfer. And then one of the biggest outs that we did make was actually for a player that we had loaned out last season. This is a player that we did sign off the next gen list only a year or so ago. Joe Corker, our Northern Irish goalkeeper, 20 years old, does have quite good potential, but being a foreign player, Peter Huelervik, still our first choice goalkeeper here at Bolsinger, and we did get offered £11.5 million from Manchester United for this guy. And that looked far too good to turn down considering the value that he did have when he was here at the club. So that is a big chunk of money for a goalkeeper who really we didn't need here at the club with the depth that we do have in that position. We signed him in 2032 for £1 million, loaned him out to St. Mirren in Scotland last season. And off the back of that, he has left us for £11.5 million, a great bit of business there, getting a lot of money into the club for a player, as I said, who wasn't even here out on loan in Scotland last season. And then probably the most notable transfer alongside Andy Harwood, we have sold Thiago Polo to Udinese. I thought we could potentially improve one of our centre-backs in this squad. We have done that, and Thiago Polo did look the weakest of our centre-backs, even though a few seasons ago, he was a really, really good player for us in the save, a great aerial threat, but he was the player who the most interest did come in outside of Ali Ramadan. He's definitely the centre-back who we want to keep here at the club, Thiago Polo. We decided to let go to Udinese in Serie A. We signed him back in 2028 for £1.9 million, make just over double profit on him by selling him to Italy for £4.5 million, and I felt like that was an area we could potentially improve in, in the first team going in to this upcoming European season. Alongside that, a lot of loans out of players who don't quite fit in terms of squad registration here at Volsinger for this upcoming Champions League season. Some players who weren't going to play too much, so we've decided to let them go elsewhere and get some game time. And we've also sold one of our youngsters, Ali Steinpusson. He has gone to Akranes for £1.9 thousand pounds 
two and a half star potential. He was a player I felt like we could let go to a fellow Icelandic team. So that wraps up the outs and noble outs there. Andy Howard as well as Tiago Polo. And I suppose Joe Corcoran just because of the money involved. And that one, as I said, in terms of the ins, there's been three ins, albeit technically only two, because Adam Saki, we already knew he was going to join us after he was here on loan last season. Jimmy Calls is a player that we signed on a free transfer, a former Manchester United goalkeeper. So he kind of is a swap deal there for Joe Corcoran. Not quite as much current ability, but that four-star potential, picking him up on a free transfer, not a bad bit of business, even if. He's only going to be our third choice goalkeeper for this upcoming season, but not being a foreigner compared to Joe Corcoran does give him a little bit of an advantage because it does seem like a little bit of a wasted foreign spot there on a goalkeeper that low in the picking order. And then our big transfer that we have made going into this Champions League season, we've spent £15 million up front. The rest of that is going to be on add-ons. That is for Filippo Dinelli. This is the replacement. For Thiago Polo, he walked straight into the first team alongside Ali Ramadan as our starting centre back. Look at that value 71 to 91 million pounds. That is clearly our highest value player here at Volsunga. He has four and a half star potential, three star current ability, albeit when you go over to the tactics screen, sometimes that shows up as three and a half star current ability. He looks like a great pickup as a ball playing defender. Off Genk in Belgium, the 21-year-old free-capped international at a young age. He is hopefully going to be here for a long time and looks like a really, really good centre-back. Is actually a little bit better than Ali Ramadan when you do compare the attributes that he is a great pickup, even though overall we have spent just north of £30 million on him. In fact, over £35 million on him, but we've only spent £15 million of that this season. The rest is going in installments over the next three seasons, but he does look like a great replacement there. For Tiago Polo, we did have someone else actually lined up out of Uruguay. He would have been valued around the 9 million mark, but unfortunately, when we were waiting for that deal to go through after selling Tiago Polo, in the end, he decided to sign an extension with Gremio. So this was our plan B, and to be fair, looks like a very, very good plan B. Also actually helps probably potentially more than the player that we would have signed out of Uruguay. The fact that this one is an EU player, so that actually might suit us more in terms of squad registration. But Filippo Dinelli, a great pickup for us here at Volsunga off of Genk to be our starting centre back alongside Ali Ramadan for this upcoming European season. So that's the transfer business that we have done off the back of the Club World Cup. I'd like to think our squad just a little bit stronger than it was going into Europe. This time last season, of course, when we did make the Champions League final. And before we do get into looking at how the other Icelandic teams have got on in European qualifying so far, we'll do a quick run through of the squad going in to this European season. First off, we'll work our way through our ideal starting 11. First off, Puerto Huel Lurvik still in goal. His ability has just regressed slightly in comparison to the rest of the squad since this time last year. If that continues, maybe we do need to look at a new goalkeeper for next European season, but he's doing a decent job for us here, is the Norwegian international, and he keeps his spot as our first choice goalkeeper at the club, does Peter Well, Lurvik right back, exactly the same, Lee Van Tam, he was good for us last season, on an upward trajectory in terms of his progress, he will be our starting right back out on the left hand side, exactly the same there yet again, with Kenny Boreal, he's pretty similar in terms of his ability to this time last season, very good player, who has just recently got his first French international cap. So he will be staying for us out at left back. And then that new look centre back partnership on the right hand side. The player that we did just show you guys. And Filippo Dinelli and alongside him is our long time first choice centre back. And Ali Ramadan four star current ability and potential. Even though according to that progress graph he has just regressed slightly since this time last season. But still clearly of the players who were already at the club was the best choice to go alongside our new signing as our centre-back, albeit this time he's going to be playing on the left-hand side with Denali, looking like a little bit more of a threat in the air. From set-piece, the midfield exactly the same as it was last season. Basaro Gay in the DM role continues to steadily improve, now rated between 10 million 
and a 11 million pounds here at Bolson, where I can tell you we're getting bids up around the 40 million mark for this guy. And even then, I think it would take something a lot more for us to even consider selling him. He is so important to how we play in that halfback role. Is the Senegalese international alongside him the highest rated player in terms of star rating at the club, Lasana Dumbia? He is there, very similar in terms of ability to this time last season as well, but has been a great box-to-box -box midfielder for us so far since we signed him a few seasons ago. And Kalen Rakasan, these days, only rated at three-star current ability. And to be fair, that progress has dropped off a cliff since this time last season, but he's still been performing well for us ever since we bought him in here at Bolsinger to cover the Mazala role. In terms of our front three, that is also the same as it was for most of the last Champions League campaign. Nicholas Zimmerman out on the right wing. Yet again, he continues to make improvements for a half star current ability and potential and has now got two international caps for France as well. Here's our right winger out on the left. We have Chaka Traore, the Ivorian. He's actually regressed a little bit since this time last season, but hopefully he can kick into gear here in the Champions League and up front. Technically, our new signing in Adam Saki Spent £5.5 .5 million to make that deal permanent. Now valued up around the £10 million mark. He looks like a great, great signing. Really hopeful he can be our long-term striking option here at the club. And now we make our way down to the other players who are registered for this season's Champions League. I might have actually made a boo-boo here as I did register Alan Basicki, our backup box-to-box -box midfielder who we didn't sign that long ago. But I think in hindsight, I think the player I'd rather register is going to be Louis Halila as he looks like a better left back than Stamatas Chatzakis. And we do have depth there in the DM role still with Brynja Galtason, who can do a job. So I think in the end, Alan Basicki might miss out on this Champions League squad when I do get the next opportunity in favour of Louis Halila. But in terms of our current squad, the current backup left back, albeit as I said, not too sure how long for, is Stamatas Chatzakis. has actually improved slightly since this time last season, but as a player, I would like to move on sooner rather than later once some of these new signings do become homegrown club and nation, which I think is going to take another year here so they can get into the Champions League without us having to worry about registering them. On the bench, our backup centre-back is Gaetano Duplisco, three-star current ability and potential has improved slightly since this time last season. Still does a very good job for us when called upon and his centre-back partner in the backup team this season is going to be Elias Anderson. He drops down out of the first choice 11 with that addition of Filippo Dinelli. As you can see, that progress graph, he has just dropped a bit there in terms of his ability compared to this time last season, but is still a good centre-back option for us should we suffer an injury. Or two, back to our bench for these games. Corral Giroux is in there as the bench option in the midfield as well as the defensive midfield has regressed a bit since this time last season as well, but is still a good option there with that two and a half star slash three star ability that the Czech international has. Back up left winger as well as right winger and striker is Joe Nata, but we're going to use him mostly as a left winger. His ability yet again regressed since this time last season, but is starting to perk up a little bit now that he's getting some regular game time as a left winger. Our backup and an out striking option for this upcoming European season is Hercules Delfino, two and a half star current ability and potential, but he has improved since this time last season. Might be a player that we potentially look to move on in a little while, considering he does take up a foreign spot, and according to this, isn't going to improve too much off where he is at the moment, but he does have some quite nice attributes. So hopefully he's going to do a good job for us like he did at the Club World Cup when Adam Saki isn't performing our other options on the bench. Fabio Mariano, great versatility, homegrown club, three-star current ability, and potential and has improved a little bit since this time last season. As I said, great bench impact. We can play him in most positions in that front half of the field. Now, back up right back is going to be Ian Carlo. He's there ahead of Redenko Crollo because he is homegrown at club and in nation, but a player who, again, we're probably going to look to move on in the next couple of years, especially next year, when Crollo does not need to be registered for the Champions League after spending a year at the club. But his ability is regressing. That is a reason I would like to get rid of Carlo over the next little while, but is still a good backup option for us at right back with that two and a half star ability and potential. And then the rest of our squad 
for this upcoming Champions League season, Patrick Nygaard is an emergency right winger, pretty similar in terms of his ability to this time last season. The next player on our list is a homegrown club player there in Gunnar Sigperson. He's not the greatest in terms of current ability, but does have free star potential. So he's going to be a player that we can use at centre back or in the DM role if we do have an injury crisis in either of those positions. Next up, bring our Galtus on. He is still a solid defensive midfield option for us, albeit his ability has regressed a little bit since this time last season. Another player who's probably going to get replaced in the next couple of years by someone like Elaine Basicki. Next up, we do have. Frederick Larson, he's dropped right down the pecking order with the likes of Jonata switching out to left wing, but he is still rated two and a half star current ability and potential, even though he's regressed a little bit since this time last season, an emergency wing option there. In case we do get a few injuries, our backup goalkeeper for this upcoming season in the Champions League is going to be Declan Spencer, two star current ability, three and a half star potential. He's getting a lot of game time with our backup team and he's improved a little bit since this time last season. Here's the Scottish 21-year-old next up on our registered players. Paul Stein Arneson, a backup midfielder, down to two-star current ability, but being homegrown in the nation as well as at club. That's the reason that he is still in our squad and is actually quite similar in terms of ability. So this time last season still does a decent job for us when called upon. Does the 27-year-old with 54 Icelandic caps these days. And as I said, the last player currently registered is Alan Basicki, but I think we're going to change that next possible opportunity to Louis Herrera because he's a better left back than Stamatas Chatsakis and does have that five-star potential. I think he's going to be the only one of those signings off the next gen list who we do register for this upcoming European season. Unfortunately, couldn't fit the likes of Hans Voss or Redenko Krolo into this year's Champions League squad, but this time next season, those players will have spent a year at the club, so I think we won't need to register them for next season's Champions League. They'll get through anyway, so that will mean we should have a very, very deep and talented squad for next season's Champions League, but that is what the squad does look like going into this year where we try and go one step further than last year and win the Champions League for the first time. But while we did get through that little recent stint of domestic games while waiting for this Champions League playoff, the other Icelandic teams have been working their way towards making the group stages of European competition as well. First off, we did have HK who started off in the second qualifying round of the league path of the Champions League. And thankfully, they got off to an absolutely great start here over Dynamo Kiev. They picked up a 2-0 win in the first league, backed it up with a 1-0 win. So thanks to that, they made their way through to the third qualifying round and that guaranteed them at least a group spot in one of the UEFA competitions. And then they did the job again in the third qualifying round. So at the very worst, they can drop down to the Europa League, but they are also alongside us going to be playing in a Champions League playoff that is after they defeated Sporting of Portugal 4-2 on aggregate and off the back of a 2-0 win in the second leg. So alongside us playing Legia Warsaw in the Champions League playoffs is going to be HK taking on PSB Eindhoven would have been quite confident if they had have got Ross County, but in the end, that looks like an interesting tie there for HK. But on recent form, defeating both Sporting of Portugal and Dynamo Kiev, they are not in that playoff without a shout, but even then dropping down to the Europa League might not be the worst thing for those guys. But HK alongside us are in with a chance of making the group stages of the Champions League. Next off, we drop down to the Europa League in the third round where Phil Kier entered. Unfortunately, they got a Dynamo Kiev team who were stinging off the back of that loss to HK. And in the end, Dynamo Kiev proved far too strong for Phil Kier. Down in the Europa League, they picked up a 4-1 win on aggregate, which meant that Phil Kier are dropping into a Conference League playoff in today's episode. And in the earlier rounds of Conference League qualifying, Breda Blick entered in the second round. Unfortunately, they suffered a very, very narrow defeat there to a team from Bosnia and Herzegovina. They lost by one goal there, so they were knocked out in the second qualifying round. But we did have one more team, which did enter in the third qualifying round of that competition. And as you can see right at the top of that fixture list, that was Nuts KR, and they just got the job done over Azerbaijan's Kualabag there, thanks to a 2-1 win in the second leg. So that means that we have two teams today in a conference league playoff. That is Nuts KR, as well as Phil Kier dropping down from that third qualifying round 
of the Europa League. Phil Kier are taking on a team from Kazakhstan. I'd like to think they'd have a decent chance of winning that one. Meanwhile, Nats Kiar have what looks like a little bit of a tougher tie there. They take on Slovan Bratislava from Slovakia. So that is what has been going on so far in European qualifying for this upcoming European season. We've got two teams in a Conference League playoff and one team alongside us in a Champions League playoff of HK taking on PSV Eindhoven. But today, we are about to get into the first league of our Champions League playoff. We are taking on Legia Warsaw, a team that we did meet, I believe, this time last season, if not the year before. We've beaten them quite comfortably recently, so hopefully we can do the same here again and make our way through to the group stages, as you would expect, of your Club World Cup champions and the team that did make the final of the Champions League last season. Three-star reputation. That should be a team that we are very, very capable of beating. And hopefully, with the length that this episode could be, we do the job on them in the first league and make sure that the second league doesn't take too much importance. Something else to mention, we have had a little bit of a reputation boost off the back of that Club World Cup win. It might also be the fact we did make the finals of the Champions League last season. But nonetheless, we have gone up from three and a half star reputation to four star reputation now. So hopefully that's going to help us improve the quality of players that we can bring to the club. But I think that covers off everything that we do need to before we get stuck into this Champions League playoff. A lot of stuff that we did need to get through there, but I thought most of it was quite important. So without any further ado, we're going into this first game of Champions League qualifying with our full strength 11 available. And we'll come back shortly from the Laugala Zavala to take on Legia Warsaw. And up to the six minute mark, we do have our first highlight here of the first league of this Champions League playoff. It was a throw in there for Legia who are in the red, but thankfully we get position straight off the back of that and hopefully can get a few goals nice and early here and make sure that we do the job in the first league, which you kind of expect from us these days off the back of making the final last season and winning that Club World Cup at the end of last week. Chaka Traore puts the ball in here. For Kenny Boreal squares that for Nicholas Zimmerman. Nice header there into the bottom left corner. And the first highlight that we do see, we go 1-0 up. So a perfect start here. Hopefully we can put the foot down and really make sure that the job's done here. After the first leg, Kenny Boreal, given lots of space here down the left-hand side, picks out Zimmerman. Good header, 1-0 Volsunger after only seven minutes. And only a few minutes off the back of that first highlight and goal. We are back on the attack. A new signing there, Denali plays that. To Basaro, Gay and Ali Ramadan gives that over to the assister and Kenny Boreal Rakasan tries to put a ball through there for one of our attackers, albeit there's a chance on the counter attack. Great chance for Saki, he just puts it wide. Still 1 0 coming up to the 10 minute mark, albeit another highlight here and Huel Lurvik will control that nicely. We do need to keep an eye out down in the bottom left corner for any updates from that game between PSV and HK, but we'll keep an eye on that if anything does pop out throughout these 90 minutes, but so far for us, it has been a good start. Denali takes his time on the ball here, plays it out to Levan Tam. Zimmerman puts the ball over for Chaka Chore, beats the goalkeeper at his near post. It looks like we're going to wait here for a VAR check, but I think it looked pretty safe there. I think he's onside, and that should be 2-0 after 11 minutes, and indeed that is the case. So a really good start from us here in this Champions League playoff. Nicholas Zimmerman plays a nice ball over the top, Chaka as well on side, a little bit soft from the goalkeeper there, getting beaten from that angle, but 2-0 Volsunger after 11 minutes. And we go up to the 16-minute mark for our next highlight that was worth showing. Legia Warsaw actually scored a goal off the back of that second one that we scored, albeit the player that scored the goal was about 10 yards offside, so I didn't think that was too much worth showing you guys, especially with how long today's episode could be. But here's a chance for Adam Saki. He puts that in the bottom right corner off of a nice ball there. From Kaelin Rakasan, and we are already in a very, very good position here in this Champions League playoff. 3-0 up after only 16 minutes. Adam Saki plays this ball back to Rakasan. He makes his run, does the Moroccan striker. Good finish. 3-0 vaults on the nice and early in this first league. And we have to wait to the 33 minute mark for our next highlight. But yet again, it does look like we are on the attack here as it did start off with a goal kick to Legia, and we do win position back here and start to try and get something going here on the counter attack. A little bit of an interesting deflection there, but it does fall to the Legia walls of the goalkeeper who will pump this deep, but we should win this one back in the air and Denali with a nice flick on there for Lasana Dumbia. Adam Saki is through yet again and somehow gets that past 
the goalkeeper yet again that's really soft from the league of wars of a goalkeeper at his near post but we are not complaining adam saki picks up a double and with 10 minutes left in the first half we are already 4-0 up very very soft goal this one not much power not too sure how it gets past the goalkeeper as i said but we'll take it 4-0 volsunga with just over 10 minutes left of the first half of the first league and only a few minutes off the back of that fourth goal, we have yet another highlight here inside the half of Legia Warsaw. We could really put a hurting on these guys the way that this has been going so far in the first half, albeit a little bit sloppy from us there. And Legia Warsaw will look to get something going here on the counter attack, albeit they are going to have to play out from defense as we try and get the ball back nice and high up the field. But so far, taking their time on the ball, at least until the goalkeeper clears that good header one. From Basaroge, and we are back on the attack. Nicola Zimmerman puts this in for Lasana. Dumbia just goes wide. Still 4 0 with eight minutes left in the first half. And now we go up to the 40 minute mark. We try and play a ball over there for Adam Saki to complete his hat trick, but the goalkeeper gets there before he does, albeit can clear that only as far as Denali. And we are back on the counter attack. Chaka Traore, great chance, similar to the one he scored earlier, but this time the goalkeeper makes the save at his near post 4 0, not too long before half time. And that is half time in the first league of this Champions League playoff. A very good first half from us there. Complete domination. Very much outperforming our XG so far in this one as we take a 4 0 lead into the second half of this first league. Absolutely no changes needed. And hopefully we can put this tie to bed in the next 45 minutes. And up to the 62 minute mark, we've had no highlights so far that are worth showing you guys in the second half. Bussero Gay is down to a red heart. So we're going to make our first substitution. Karel Giroud to come on for him with a half hour left and very shortly off the back of that substitution Nicola Zimmerman has a free kick which he tries to curve top right corner just goes wide still 4-0 inside the last half hour and only a few minutes off the back of that previous free kick it is us in possession again Denali controls that well looking quite solid so far in his first on camera appearance especially in a Champions League qualifier hopefully he can handle the step up to the group stage which we should be making, even with the scoreline at 4-0 as it is currently. But Zimmerman puts this in for Saki, heads that down for Chaka Traore. And there we get our 5-0 scoreline, which should surely be enough for us to make our way through to the group stages of the Champions League. Some good work here down our right-hand side. Lee Van Tam to Zimmerman. Nice ball there for Adam Saki and a clever flick there for Chaka Traore. He picks up a double. 5-0 Volsung off just over 20 minutes left. And only a few minutes off the back of that fifth goal, we're going to make our second substitution. Lasana Dumbia is down to a red heart. Stamatas Chatzakis can play in the DM role, which is quite useful. So we'll bring him on, switch him around with Karel Giroud. Only one sub left and 5-0 up with just over 15 minutes left. And we do have another highlight not too long off the back of that previous one, that substitution that we did make sitting on a 5-0 lead. Can we extend this before we do head to Poland? For the second leg, nice ball in there for Adam Saki. Chips the goalkeeper, but a great clearance off the line there from the Legia defender. Still 5-0 with just over 10 minutes left. And with 10 minutes left in this one, we are going to make our last substitution. Nicholas Zimmerman is down to a red heart of the players off the bench. I think Jonata needs the game time more than others. That's our last sub. Still 5-0 up with just under 10 minutes left. And right off the back of that last substitution, we do have a highlight here. Starting with a throw, Denali takes his time to play that up to Levan Tam, but we are in a position already to be making our way through to the group stages of the Champions League. As I said earlier, as you'd expect from a team which did make the final of this competition last season, especially off the back of a win in the Club World Cup, especially after strengthening our defence there in Filippo Denali. But Chaka Traore makes his way to the edge of the box, puts this into the mixer. For Jonata gets ahead on the end of that, but just over the bar, and it's still 5-0 late in this one. And up to the 85 minute mark, we are about to have a free kick here, but we do have some news from the HK game for the first time. They have picked up a late red card in the away league, one of our former players too, in Gabriel Zapata. So it's a little bit concerning, albeit while that was going on, Jonata puts away that ball from Kenny Boreal with a little bit of help from the inside of the post there. And we make it 6-0 on the day in the first league. We really will only need to show you guys the highlights of the second leg, good to finish there from Jonata. Hopefully, HK can hold on with 10 men, but we are 6-0 up late in this one. And now up to the 89-minute mark, we have a free kick here, which Chaka tries to put in to Saki, but now is Cullen Rakasan from the edge of the box. He bangs that into the right corner, and that makes it 7-0 
late in this one. We are getting a little bit of a second wind here late in this game, and we are blowing Legia Warsawa completely out of the water off the free kick. They try and clear it. Chucker heads that on to Kalen Rakasan, curves that nicely into the right hand corner, and that makes it 7 0 coming up to full time here in the first leg. And just before this one does finish, we do have a throw which we do get back there out to Kenny Boreal. We'll just keep an eye out and see if anything happens late there in that PSV HK game, because that's probably of more interest at that stage, considering the scoreline in our game. But Kenny Boreal on the edge of the box puts this in for Jonata Giroud with a chance, but blasts it wide. Really good chance there to make it 8-0 on the day. But it looks like this one might finish at 7-0. And unfortunately, PSV have got a goal very late, so they're going to take a lead into HK's home league of that Champions League playoff. That late red card could prove quite costly that for HK, but in the end, we get the job done very, very comprehensively there. In the first leg of our playoff, we take a 7-0 lead into the second leg in Poland. That should be something we can absolutely make sure that we can sit on if we actually need to. We'll probably extend our lead, you'd like to think, with the quality in this team, and we should be in a position where we already made our way through to the group stages of the Champions League. We'll just make sure that that HK result did end as we thought it did. And indeed, that late red card to one of our former players and Gabriel Zapata might have proved costly as they concede their in injury time. So they'll be 1 0 down when they get back to Iceland for their home league. But we'll come back shortly, update you guys on what's going on down in the Conference League after the first leg of that one. And off the back of that, we'll show you guys highlights from the second leg of our Champions League playoff as we're in a pretty safe spot here, taking a 7 0 lead into the second league. And just stopping in quickly before we play a domestic game prior to the second leg of that Champions League playoff to update you guys on what has happened halfway through Conference League playoffs. And unfortunately, both of the Icelandic teams have suffered defeat. Nuts KR 1-0 against Slovan Bratislava. So they might actually still be in that one if they can turn it around in the second leg. Really unfortunately though, Phil here, quite a disappointing performance from those guys. They lose 3-1 to Kazakhstan opposition. So Phil Kia looked like they are right up against it, but at this stage, doesn't look like either of those teams in the Conference League playoffs are making their way through to the group stages of that competition. But we'll come back shortly, show you guys highlights from the second leg of our tie against the year Warsaw and off the back of that, see if HK can make their way through to the Champions League before we have a look at who we get in the group stages of this year's competition. And here are the highlights from our second league here against Legia Warsaw. Of course, we took a 7-0 lead into this tie, so there was really nothing that Legia Warsaw could do to turn that around. But thankfully, we did still put out a good performance. Adam Saki there was actually onside, so that goal stood at the two-minute mark, and this game was completely the Adam Saki show. As at the 27-minute mark, he made it a double, just picks the goalkeeper there at his near post to make it 2-0. And then right before half time, he picked up a hat trick. In injury time, Lee Van Tam given a lot of space there down the right-hand side. Nice ball fizzed in, and he taps that into the bottom left corner to make it 3-0 going into the sheds. And then about 15 minutes into the second half, he picked up his fourth goal on the day, takes that around the goalkeeper, and makes it 4-0 in the second leg and 11-0 overall on aggregate. So that's a really good performance there. In the second leg, you may notice on the bench, Louis Hulela, we did register for the second leg of this one, he is going to be in our Champions League squad instead of Basicki. As we mentioned before, we gave him a little bit of game time there late to try and help improve his growth with that five-star potential that he does have. But we are very, very safely through to the Champions League draw, which we are about to get into. But before then, we do need to update you guys on what happens on the league path side of Champions League qualifying with HK if we make our way down this fixture list until we can get there and switch it over to the league path side. Unfortunately, yet again, HK got a red card in that second leg and then conceded a goal off the back of that. So it was very similar to what happened in that first league and they lose their Champions League playoff 2-0 to PSV Eindhoven, albeit being in the Europa League might actually be quite suitable for HK after a few years ago they were in the Champions League and did absolutely nothing. So hopefully they get a group down in the Europa League where they can make a bit of an impact, but some good help there from HK this year in European qualifying, making their way through to a Champions League playoff 
and they will be in the group stages of the Europa League. We'll still go away a little bit until we see the results of that second leg from the Conference League qualifiers. But now it is time for us to get stuck in to the Champions League draw yet again. We are a pot two team. Just having a quick look here at the teams that we could get out of the top pot. It could be Real Madrid, Manchester City, the team that beat us in the final last season. Chelsea, Juventus, PSG, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, or Benfica. Not too sure how Benfica have snuck their way into the top pot, but obviously that would be the team which everyone from pot two would like to get, you would think, down to the second pot. We are in there alongside Man United, Arsenal, Milan, Barcelona, Real Sociedad, Nice, and Dortmund. Down to the third pot, we've got Ajax, Lille, Napoli, RB Salzburg, Sevilla, PSV, Ostende, or Hofer Berlin, all teams I think we should be taking care of at this point of the save and down to the fourth pot, which is teams we 100% should be beating both times, both home and away. It is Palazan, Shakhtar, Galatasaray, Famalicão from Portugal, which is a very unfamiliar name here in the group stages of the Champions League. We've got Hibernian out of Scotland this time around, FC Cologne, we've got Hellas Verona, and yet again, Sochi. Uh, in the group stage draw for the Champions League. So we'll quickly fire through this first pot and see which group Benfica end up in. And they get Group G. Obviously, that would be the group that we want because that would give us a great chance of ending up on top. But apart from that, we'd probably just like to avoid Manchester City or Real Madrid, the teams which have knocked us out of Europe over the last few seasons. But now it's time for us to work our way through the second pot. And in fact, it doesn't take long at all. We get drawn against Juventus. They were quite difficult a few seasons ago, but we've improved quite a bit since then, so that could actually be quite an interesting battle for top spot in that group. It's certainly a stronger looking group already than what we have had over the past two seasons. Looking at those other groups, Manchester United will be absolutely stoked with the fact that they have got that group with Benfica, but now we go down to pot three and we get Sevilla. That's a team who also made the knockouts of the Champions League last season. So early days, this does look like a potential group of death severe. We did get past in that first knockout round, but only off the back of a 2-0 win in the first league. It was a very scrappy nil all draw in the second league. So that could be quite tight. Will be interesting to see how this group does play out. But that is already a very, very strong looking group, which we do find ourselves a part of as we get through the rest of this draw out of the third pot. And it already, as I said, Looks like Group A, the one that we are in, might be the strongest this time around. And the team who is out of Pot 4 for our group is Shakhtar out of Ukraine. With the group that we have ended up in, I think we definitely need to beat those guys both times just to give ourselves a chance of making the knockouts of the Champions League yet again. But that is, as I said, quite a tough group. I think it is fair to say we have been drawn alongside Juventus, Sevilla and Shakhtar. That's two other teams which made the knockouts of the Champions League last season alongside us. So that is a very, very strong group, a lot stronger than what we've had over the past few seasons when we have been able to top the groups that we have been in. So that's what our group looks like for this season's Champions League. We'll come back shortly, see which group HK got in the Europa League and check in on how those Icelandic teams got on in the second leg of those Conference League playoffs. And we've gone forward a little bit to see which group that HK have gotten in the Europa League as well as check in on what happened in the second legs of those Conference League playoffs there. You can see the groups for the Europa League this season. There's a few fairly weak looking ones. Unfortunately, the group which HK got is not one of those groups. They have been handed a really brutal group here for the Europa League. They might be in trouble, which is a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping they could give us some help here in the Europa League this season, but they have got a very strong group there with Valencia, Montpellier and Lazio. So HK would be doing well, I think, in that group to be getting anything out of it, but hopefully they can give us just a little bit of help maybe with one upset win somehow in that group. But that is a really tough looking Europa League group there, especially when you look at some of the other groups in the Europa League this season. So HK, I think we're a little bit hard done by there down in pot four, but hopefully they can start making European football a little bit more consistently now, as long as we can stay in and around our current coefficient position on the table, so not good news there for HK. They also get what looks like a little bit of a group of death there in the Europa League, albeit HK probably a little bit lambs to the slaughter, much the same as Shakhtar in the group which we got 
in the Champions League. And to add to the unfortunate news, we have a look at what happened in the second legs of the Conference League. We'll make our way back, but you don't really have to worry about seeing any Icelandic teams because unfortunately, neither of them got the job done. Slovan Bratislava wiped the floor with KR in the second leg of that playoff. They lost 4-0 on aggregate, and we make our way down to Phil Kier. They won the second leg 1-0, which is a little bit frustrating. That first leg loss did come back and bite them. They go down by one goal on aggregate. So that means it's just us and HK in Europe this season. But that's still an improvement from the last few years. At least we've got two teams in Europe from Iceland this season, albeit both of us look like we are in quite tough groups. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Hopefully it hasn't worked out being too long, but we did have a lot to go through off the back of that Club World Cup. At the end of last week, we've made a big new signing there in Filippo Dinelli, and we've made our way through to the group stages of the Champions League, and we have got quite a tough group in Group A alongside Juventus, Sevilla, and Shakhtar Dines. But if you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We will come back tomorrow, play the first game of the group stage of this year's Champions League, and that is an absolute must-win game in this group at home, taking on Shakhtar. That's a great chance for us to get off to a flying start, and also off the back of that, our next game is at home against Sevilla as well. So hopefully we can yet again get off to a good start here in the group stages of the Champions League. But the second game of tomorrow's episode will hopefully also be the Molka Bikarin final as long as we can get past Vikinger as we should in the semi-finals of that competition. So we'll come back tomorrow, take on Shakhtar in the group stage of the Champions League and hopefully play the final of the Icelandic Cup. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.